Hello, folks. Welcome back. We're on the one, the only Hobo Tom. <laughs> wow, I don't have that much of an intro to give. That's weird. But that's okay. It's time to talk about Raw because I want to make this kind of quick. Um, I was busy today. I'd like to get some sleep if possible. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. But before I do that, though, always there's some shout outs. So you're Molly Waller. Molly, yeah, Waller. Indeed. You miss. I've earned that six count. John Center. Indeed, thank you for interacting with me when the one podcast went down. At least someone else was in Brazil watching and spoke English. Thank you very much, sir. You've earned that. You are a true master of the air guitar. And then Duncan, you, sir, you're carrying around in, in the streets of Sao Paulo 
that briefcase boombox. So again, if you too would like to be mentioned and have your honorary video shout out here on the Hobo and well, one day I'll get a girlfriend YouTube page. You two can find me either at Discord over on YouTube somewhere. Um, email me, leave a comment. Although I do check my emails very infrequently. But I have a feeling I should though. I haven't done that in a while. I'm almost scared to look at what's there. That's okay. And you can always subscribe. So now let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Wow. This was a snooze through show. Starts off recap of Randy Orton getting beat up by Drew McIntyre. So Drew McIntyre cuts a promo. Uh, Adam Pierce says, Drew, you shouldn't have done what you did. And then Keith Lee she shows up. The Oh, Baskin is glory. Limitless Keith Lee. That was pretty good warm up to the show. Um, and then it just got, I don't know, it just got slow. Then there was a weird match. I don't know what happened. I'll get to that. But it starts off the show, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro take on the Street Profits. Again, they tease this from last week where they're lining up Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions is a 27. So that means there's still one more week before the go-home show. So we'll see what's going on. Cause I, besides Drew McIntyre versus maybe Randy Orton, I have no clue who's going to be there. I have no idea what else is going to be there. So so we'll see, especially after that one match. That was weird. That's okay. So with this match, it's Shinsuke Nakamura take, and Cesaro taking on the Street Profits. Uh, Cesaro, right off the bell, bell. Big European uppercut. He's so good at that. Uh, as soon as the bell rings, he, he nails Dawkins with that. Um, Do Dawkins makes a comeback. He tags in Ford again, uh, Street Profits. They do their good double team work. It's not too bad. Uh, Ford. He, Shinsuke Nakamura and, and Cesaro got stuck on the outside. Ford tried to splash on them. They caught him. Literally dropped him, middle of the back first, onto the edge of the barricade. I know that barricade's padded. That just looked. Awkward and painful. How painful? Who knows, but it looked really nasty, though. And then Dawkins had a toss suplex. Uh, Shins um, to counter that, Shinsuke Nakamura did his uh, sliding German suplex. And those knees. Wow, those knees are vicious. Um, but back in the ring, Montez Ford goes up top. And Shinsuke Nakamura was smart. He got the knees up. I'll tell you what, you fly someone, you fly, you fly abdomen exposed across someone's knees. I don't care how much you brace yourself, that hurts. Uh, Cesaro then does a swing in that, in that knee combo. That should be a finisher, but it wasn't um, Cesaro. He suplexed forward, but Dawkins got the blind tag. Dawkins did a splash. Uh, he gets the pinfall. I'll tell you what, the street, street Profits win? I was shocked. This is a cheeseburger of a match. And then um, in the back, or in the production area, we have Andrade and Angel Garza arguing. Uh, Vegas there. Vegas like, I've had it with you two. So you just see like two brothers fighting. You see um, Andrade and Angel Garza fight. I guess it's Lena Vegas done managing them. She had her good run. That was okay. And I do want to know how the top stays up. Because I know there's class back there. But yeah. There's like elastic holding it up. And again, amazing. Lena Vegas is so tiny too. That's either here or there. Then there was a the little shot of the, of the Mysterio family. Then our next match, we have in a grudge match, Cedric Alexander versus Ricochet. And this is... Uh, 
this is where it starts to get kind of weird. And it seems like the WWE is really spinning its wheels as to they kind of know what they would like to do, but they don't know how to do it. The right way, at least. Um, Brawl starts off against Cedric Alexander and Ricochet. This is for, for the most part a grudge match. They just throw knees and punches for a while. Uh, Ricochet gets stuck in a waist lock. And I don't see how waist locks are painful. They're just kind of annoying. It's not like a, it's not a, like a bear hug because you're not really putting pressure on the rib cage itself. You're just like holding them by the waist. Yeah, you're sucking them in a little bit, but still, you're allowing the ribs themselves to move versus the the bear hug where you're actually contracting every time the person exhales. You squeeze a little bit more, squeeze a little bit more. Squeeze a little more. Very anaconda-ish look. So, I don't see what the waist lock. I don't. It's just like a lazy wrestled, and I do not like wrestlers with lazy wrestles. Well, Ricochet did, did um get a get a big drop kick. That looked good. Then he threw a super kick, which was great. Um, he all Ricochet was getting the better of it. Cedric was very more brawlerish, although Cedric did hit a Michinoku driver. Uh, Ricochet hit that bridging Snapdragon suplex. And then the lights went out. And then you know what happened next. Retribution came out. Um, they beat up Ricochet. However, the Hurt business held the middle of the ring. I don't know. They're trying. I can kind of see where they're going. But instead of taking that straight and narrow, they're like way over here on like the super windy mountain path. So yeah, this match, it was okay. It was a, a ham sandwich. In the Hurt Business, they confront <laughs> Adam Pierce backstage and it's like, yeah, your security sucks. It's like, oh, so you guys volunteer? <laughs> volunteer. Uh -uh. Yeah, they want to be paid, baby. Pay is always good. And that leads us into our next match. And I'll tell you what, I was shocked. Because this seemed to take forever to get to. And that's between 9 and 10 o'clock. It just dragged on. And this was a weird match. It was Mickey James taking on Asuka. Um, starts off with a fast roll up on on Oscar by Mickey James, and eventually she she tr uh, tried for a black backslide, turned that into a neck breaker. So there was some good back and forth action. There was some good back and forth action. Uh, Oscar again, those was knee knee strikes. They just looked vicious. Um, you could tell Mickey was telling her spots. I don't know if Mickey wanted. I I think based on the spot. Mickey was trying to make Asuka look great and really put her over. So I credit Mickey James for that. What I won't credit Mickey James for is saying, hey. So yeah, it, when it's really obvious, I don't know. It, it just takes away from the moment. You're like, oh, there's a spot coming up. Oh, I didn't see that spot coming. Interesting. But you knew it was coming, though. So, it was just weird. Um, Asuka hit that near GTS where she just picks up Mickey James a little bit. Kind of pop up, pop up knee strike, pop up GTS almost. Um, you know, that's why it's a near GTS, near go to sleep. Asuka missed the hip attack. She's been doing that lately. Then Mickey James Mick kicked her to the outside. Uh, then they go to break. TV time. And when they come back there in the ring, you see the yay boos start trading, start trading slaps and then forearms. It was actually pretty good. Um, Asuka missed another hip attack, but Mickey James hit a mid kick, but it really seemed just to graze her. So it didn't hit like flush, but you can see where it kind of swiped, swiped on her face. So with that, yeah, yeah, that happened. A little bit later, but that's okay. Um, Mickey, she went for, she also went for the Oscar lock, 
Uh, try to actually hit a Huracurana. I'll, I'll give her credit for that. I couldn't do a Huracurana. Then did a pump kick, um, followed by a flapjack. And then she went to the top rope, did a flying Luthes press. And this is where it kind of got weird. Um, Asuka started to hit the yes kicks. Mickey James looked fine. She's like, yeah, hit me. Hit me. D don't tell Asuka to hit you. She will. Like She started to throw those kicks each time. Listen, she, she aimed for her chest, which, which I'm fine with. She didn't, like, kick her in the head. Brie Bella did with Liv Morgan. But at this point, you're like, okay, what's Mickey James? Is she going to have her comeback? And then she put Asuka starting into a half crab. And then again, so you, and this is the point where we have the glancing mid kick. Um, and then for some reason, Asuka put Mickey James into the Asuka lock. I think Mickey James trying to reverse the Asuka lock got either a pinch nerve. If you're going to reverse the Asuka lock. If your arm's caught in that position, trying to roll over. Oh, and by the way, I'll give full credit to, to Mickey James. She did what I could. Um, from a kneeling position, she would take the kick, fall down, use her use her core strength and quads, Larry to pull herself up. I can do that, folks. Still, that's kind of tough. Uh, she was like sitting, like sitting on her ankles. She get kick the, and then lay down, and then pull herself up with her core and legs. I can do that. I except for I do it in a much slower agonizing motion than she does though um but yeah it was weird like i don't know if you like tweaked your shoulder or pinched your neck or literally like when she did it like self choke herself out because like the referees like said no ring the bell and the ref like ref like absolutely terrified at something um in fact we didn't see mickey james leave the ring like we just like like the referee said Mickey James cannot continue in this match. You're like, huh? She can't be gassed. Cause the half crab doesn't do much. You could kind of fake your way through it. And if you really didn't want to tap, all you have to do is just lay there. If that was gonna be the finish of the match. This was weird. The referee had to look like, oh shit. I better stop this somehow. He rolled Mickey James out. He literally attended to her for a good 10, 15 minutes. As, um, oh, what's her face came down to, um, Zelina Vega came down to cut a promo on Asuka. Yeah, As Asuka, she just ragged all Vega around. But we didn't see, at least on TV, Mickey James leave. So I don't know if Mickey James legit. Hurt herself, which is never a good sign. Or if it's just something boshy, or she like literally screamed, I can't breathe. Again, if you flip yourself over the wrong way, I can see where you do it in such a way. Because Asuka's arm, granted, is, it's across the neck, but it's not. I mean, it shouldn't be putting any pressure in. But if you put your chin over and roll over, and, yeah, it's, it's going to. You're gonna like somehow self asphyxiate yourself, which sounds weird. But yeah, so I don't. That was like weird. It was a really good match up to that point. People are saying, "Oh, she's gassed." I'm like, I don't think she's gassed because she's just rest hold to a glancing mid kick. Unless she, hey, the other thing is, I mean, if she pulled like a hamstring or or strained a quad. Strained quads hurt. Pulled hamstrings hurt. Or if, if I hope it wasn't this. But I'll tell you what. If she twisted her upper body, because I've done it before, and you kind of tweak an intercostal muscle. Oh, yeah, that's just it. I'm just. I, I would just be like that. I'm, like I'm tapping mate. I I quit, uncle. Like ring the bell. Get me the hell out of here. And that that'll hurt for a couple days, but it's not debilitating though. Again. Mickey James is my age. So yeah, if I if I can tweak something, 
even though I'm sure she's in much more phenomenal shape than I am, I'm sure she can tweak something too. So we'll we'll see what happened there. But yeah. Um, so again, up to that point, it was a really good match, but that was just weird. It's a cheeseburger match. I mean, Mickey, Mickey James just like legit hurt herself. And I don't think it was anything Oscar really did to her. I think it was Mickey James overselling. I can't see her do that, but you never know. Um, I know she has been teasing. It's like, yeah, these, these are going to be my, my final few matches. Again, you start again, the two undefeated in the galaxy. I don't care who you are. You always lose to father time and you always lose to mother nature. Mother nature allows you to do things and father time eventually takes things away from you. I mean, just after you hit like, if you get into your upper 30s and you, and you try to have an all night bender, not happening the next morning. So again, warning to everyone out there. You get to be my age, you're like, oh, you know, that eight hours of sleep is so heavenly. But, like, even, like, five hours of sleep, you're like, uh, zombie brains. So, yeah. Is it weird? And then Keith Lee was backstage, um, cutting a promo, getting ready for his match against the Drew. Uh, Seth and Murphy were also backstage. Dominic had an interview. And then we get to... Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a Bobby Lashley. Oh, well, yeah, well, kind of. I kind of fit things in based on the amount of paper I had to write on. But we had Bobby Lashley taking on Eric of the Viking Raiders. Again, this was pretty good. This was short. Um, Eric goes right after Bobby Lashley. Because remember, Bobby Lashley took out, or supposedly took out Ivar, even though Ivar did a dive and I think landed in. So, I want to say separated shoulder. It wasn't a concussion because because he was kind of clutching his upper body. So it's either a shoulder stinger, which can go right to the neck, or he separated his shoulder to say, hey, listen, I know separated shoulders, depending on the severity, I forget if they're done in degrees, but I know when I separated mine the second time, like it hurt for a good week. When I did this one once, it again, was a good couple of weeks. I think the first time I did this, I tried to come back to really like like two or three days, but yeah, like the second time I did it, it was a week, and then the first time I did this, which was a little bit more gnarly, that was another good week. So again, saying hey, I need to take like two or three weeks off. Let it fully heal itself. Because the thing with a separated shoulder, and I can still feel it, in, in, especially in the one shoulder, you stretch, you, you, stre you stretch, you don't tear the ligaments, but you stretch it enough where it, it's, it seems, e it almost makes it easier to come out of the socket again. And I know, like, Every so often, I'll hear popping noises when I move my arm like that. So I know it's kind of it's kind of being squishy in that in that joint, which is not necessarily a good thing. But yeah, um, so he goes after him. Uh, Bobby then again he turns the tables easily. Eric works over Bobby in the corner, but yeah, he gets just gets tossed out the middle of the ring, and then that stretch full Nelson. Ouch! The leg grapevine full Nelson. The full Ashley. Uh, he had to tap out. It was okay. It is what it was. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Dominic Macero taking on Seth Rollins in a seal cage. I'll tell you what. Dominic Macero, you're awesome. You've come so far. My only fear with Dominic is that they're pushing him too hard, too fast. Because this was a really good match. It starts off, Seth Rollins goes right after Dominic Mysterio. 
Hit some. Oh, whenever you do classic double axe handles to the back. That's good. Dominic then countering with a side Russian leg sweep. Classic old school wrestling moves. So good. Oh, they have to do this more often. Instead of they just like brawl. Like classic old school moves. Um, Murphy shows up ringside. He slips a kendo stick into the ring. Even though he was warned by Seth Rollins, do not come down to the ringside. Shut your mouth and know your role. But no, Murphy didn't listen. He came down to ringside, slipped a kendo stick. Seth, of course, gladly took that kendo stick because it's perfectly legal. I'm going to beat Dominic with it. Dominic is pressed into the cage. Um, Dominic Mysterio had the perfect look where it was a look where he would like touch the cage, shake it a little bit, stare at the cage and, and, say, and say, as if to say, what the hell am I getting into? Like, why am I actually stepping into a steel cage? Which any normal human being would be like, the hell is, like, I have to, I have me in there? I guess so. Ah, the facials by Dominic. Wow. I want Rey Mysterio as a teacher. He's amazing. Oh, I do have some other news and notes, but I'll get to the, I'll get to that to the end. Um, from there, Seth, again, kind of, Eats a hurricanrana as Dominic's trying to escape out of the cage, which is smart by Dominic. Dominic, once he gets in, he's like, uh, and takes a few kendo shots and double and he's like, I'm done with this. I want to get out of here as quickly as I can. Whether it's kayfabe or real life, trust me, that seal cage does look rather imposing. Uh, Dominic gets slingshotted into the cage, but instead of just bouncing off, he actually catches it, catches himself, starts to climb up. Um, Seth. Goes after him. Dominic gets crotched. Then, of course, Dominic pulls Seth down. Seth gets crotched. All's fair, I guess. Uh, Dominic did hit a frog splash. However, he, at the end, Dominic ate the two curb stomps. That was enough for Seth Rollins to get the pinfall victory. I'll tell you what. Dominic Mysterio. It would take me years to get that far. So this was a surf and turf match. And then at the end of the match, um, Seth comes out. He starts to smile near Murphy, grabs Murphy, and then he beats him up. But Murphy helped you this time. He slipped you the kendo stick, which allowed you to soften up Dominic Mysterio. Who gets it? Um, so Seth beat up Murphy a little bit. And as he was leaving, Ray Mysterio goes in the ring to check on his son. Ray! No, Ray. Your, your mother, your, your wife and daughter were out there. And Seth kind of gave him that sideways look like. <laughs> yeah. No one would ever do that to my girl. Like, you, Velveteen Dream, did that once. And I swear, hobo vengeance upon you. You deserve to be kicked in the nuts and headbutt and hobo choked by me for eyeing my girlfriend. I could only imagine what, what I would do to Seth Rollins. I would just take take Rebecca Lynch for, away from him. So, yeah. Um, so Seth eyed both the mother and daughter. And then the mother goes in. She wants to check on her boy, Dominic. Aaliyah, like, checks out Murphy. Wait a second. Then we have Raw Underground. This is just getting more and more underwhelming each time. Um, Raw Underground is Dolph versus, I don't know, someone whoever just took him on the ring. It was Riddick Moss versus Dolph Ziggler was actually pretty good. The fact that they showcased Dolph's amateur background is really good to see. Um, Riddick Moss, again, he knows how to count. He knows how to counter. He's, he has very much that shoot wrestling ability. A little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Um, Dolph tries to bulldog choke. And then Braun came in and spoiled everything. I'm like, oh, wow, this is going to be a good legitimate MMA shoot wrestling match and it wasn't. Um Braun came in, just cleaned out, just wrecked everyone. Can of soup. Okay, 
And then Drew McIntyre gets interviewed. Keith Lee shows up. They just start brawling with each other. What else would you expect? Um, back at Underground, um, Braun just beats up people. Um, it was Braun versus Titus that didn't even last long. It will be interesting. Oh, we'll get to that later. Yeah, but Titus, meh. Then we go back. Um, it was Kevin Owens versus Aleister Black. This is a match they could have on a pay-per-view because this match almost feels like a ring of honor. Tommy ends versus Kevin Steen. So they could have, if they gave this a little bit more time, and we're just a hair more creative about it. They let this build up a little bit more. It would have been better. Who knows? Maybe they are letting it build for a while. And we'll see this. Because actually, um, Royal Rumble's not that... Or Survivor Series isn't that far away. Oh, it's not. <laughs> it's only two months away. Um, so this match was pretty good. Uh, Alistair Black jumps Kevin Owens before the bell rings. He runs him from nowhere. As he has now tights instead of his trunks. For some reason, every every wrestler's calves I've seen, like I never realized Kevin Owens had such skinny legs. And I'll get and I'll and I'll say why. I mean, only Lorcan has the twiggiest looking calf muscles ever. I've seen. I think I have. Female coworkers whose calf mu muscles are bigger than his. I don't know if that's good or not, but um, well, sent on. So Black jumps Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens gets a little bit of the upper end. He's a sent tosses Alistair Black to the ground. Sent on by KO. Then he says, "No, I'm not going to pin you. He's going to just ground and ground and pound him, which is really good." Um, again, Alistair Black has such an amazing looking takedown. So crisp looking. Then he puts on, he locks on a version of a calf crusher where he puts his hand, he locks his hands behind the knee and pushes the ankle. It's just a different version of the, it's like a, almost a near standing calf crusher. It's really good. Um, then Black again goes, again, set over the top by Kevin Owens. Um, Kevin Owens tried to jump up, but no, he hits, he hits a kick. Uh, from the outside, Alistair Black still continues to work over the knee. Then Kevin Owens tried to black, uh, big, uh, black slipped in by Kevin Owens. Again, Kevin Owens, again, working over the knee. They're each working over the body part. Kevin Owens is going after the shoulders and eyes of Alistair Black. Alistair Black's just going over Kevin Owens' knee. Um, and eventually, Black eats everything. And then, oh, God, the lights flicker on and off. Why do they do this? It's such a promising match. Um, Retribution comes out. They beat up both Kevin Owens and Alistair Black. Or actually, it's enough of a, of a distraction where Kevin Owens hits the stunner, pins Alistair Black. Distraction finish. It was still pretty good. Cheeseburger match. That's right. A black um, slid into a leg bar. And then Kevin Owens got a rope break, but that was, that was before that. Um, backstage, we saw more of Drew and Keith Lee beating each other up. Then we have the Riot Squad taking on Lana and Natalya. You know, based on Miro's Miro Kupria Miro Crush Miro's actions on AEW, as soon as like the Riot Squad came out, yeah, they seemed all, all chipper and everything. What did Liv do? Oh yeah, Liv broke off a piece of Artruth's Kit Kat bar. For some reason, she did a little too sexy too. Liv, I'm a single sweet. Um, then I do have to think of a title for the show. So yeah, once, once, once Natalia and Lana came down, Lana's getting humiliated. Something bad's happening to Lana. 
Vince, however, is that petty to do that. Uh, starts off pretty quick. Natalia and Lana, they double team. Live a lot. Um, they ice, uh, they uh, live eventually makes a comeback against Natty, tosses her out of the ring. Um, Liv tosses, or actually escapes Lana, makes a tag to Ruby Riot. Then they just double team Lana, pin Lana, throw Lana to the outside because that's where she, I, an awaiting Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are. So Nia Jax, Simone drops Lana through the through the United Stable. You knew something bad was happening. You know what? This just was a piece of toast. No, 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 no. Can of soup. Wasn't that bad. Wasn't terrible, though. Can of soup for sure. And then we have Braun fighting everyone until Bobby Tunde. Oh, Bobby Tunde. But I'm bumped. But I'm bumped. But on but on Joe's theme shows up. Bobby Tunde's theme. Um, so next week it'll be Bobby Tunde versus versus Braun Strowman. And then you know something screwy was going to happen because this main event was too good to be true. It was Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee. Um, Drew getting driven into the corner by Keith Lee. Keith Lee definitely using his way to his advantage. Um, Drew, again, kicked to the face. Again, Drew was trying to protect his jaw. Keith Lee was trying to protect his legs, and I think his one shoulder was kind of injured. Um, Keith Lee did pounce Drew McIntyre out of the ring, although it's one of the weakest out-of-ring pounces I've seen in a while. But again, Drew's no small guy either. Uh, he, he, does, he definitely just doesn't want to go awkwardly out. Um, when they try to get back in the wrong ring, I'm going to... I'm going to the top row. Ouch! Ouch! That Scottish headbutt to Keith Lee. Wow. Um, there was no Future Shock DDT. Uh, Keith Lee's way too strong. He does a big back body drop. Um, then there was a big superplex. That was great spots to see. But no, no, no. No spirit bomb. Um, it led to a double cross body. And then the lights flickered on and off. Retribution showed up. They beat up Drew McIntyre and Keith Lee. This match itself, oh, Retribution is terrible. It's a ham. It, it turned a good, what could have been a promising match to a ham sandwich. And then the hurt business come down. They so it's like ten against four. So her business actually do a pretty good job of holding them off. And then Drew McIntyre and Keith get on the same page and the show ends with them like kind of sp like doing dives on everyone. And that was raw. So that was, I don't know. It's a ham sandwich of a raw. Time for some. Well, let me give you the schedule for this week. Tomorrow I will be live streaming. This will go up probably sometime in the morning tomorrow. So this has to process. Tomorrow night it's going to be a live stream of Impact Wrestling. Wednesdays AEW. Thursday I'm off. Fridays uh, SmackDown. I'm off Friday and Saturday. Oh, but also if you are in the Daytona area, I cannot make it because I have to work on Saturday. But go wrestling is allowing fans back to watch live wrestling events at the one mall in Port Orange. It should be interesting. The fact that it's the only live event scheduled prior until Biketober. Yeah, Biketober Fest. That's good. It's bringing crowds back in. The locals, I don't know. How, I've Although... The caveat being, I have no clue how many people are going to allow in the ring. Tickets, adults are 15 bucks. Yeah, a little on the high side. Kids are five, so that's that makes it up. Um, if I wasn't working, I'd probably go because I haven't made a live reaction. I haven't done live events in a while. Again, 
It's the only show in town if I ever get that Saturday off. Um, I know for the state of Florida, just to those of you like bomb slicks out there across the pond, I always ask me how are things in Florida? How are things in the U.S.? I say, well, Florida's okay. I don't know about the rest of the U.S. California's burning, and I don't know, other states have other issues. Florida's Florida, man. So, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, it is encouraging that Florida's opening up more. It gives me more to do. Um, hopefully they change work schedules around where eventually I'll have my Saturdays off. Every every so often it's nice to have a Saturday off and still get paid for the rest of the week. So let's we'll see what happens. You people stay safe out there, though. And if anyone coughs on you, just punch them.